All right, so let's move on to installation. When it comes to installing the React library for your projects, there's quite a few options that you might consider. One of them is to use CodePen website. So you could go to CodePen.io. They have a sample pen here on the documentation website. But basically, as you can see here, you have a little snippet of code that essentially renders a title to the DOM. So if you open the settings and if you go to the JavaScript tab, you're going to see that there's two libraries that have been imported for you already. So one of them is React, and that's the core React library. But there's also React DOM, which basically allows you to mount the HTML or JSX that you see here on the left to the actual DOM. But of course, besides that, if you were to build an actual project, you would most likely have a bunch of different files. So you have a lot of different components that are split across the files. And you would need a way to you know, tie up all those components. Typically, the way you do that is with imports. And in this case, we would need to use a, an external library that we mentioned already before. Babel is basically a preprocessor that allows you to transform ES5 code to ES6 code. But besides that, it also enables support for features such as modules. Modules are important because we need to be able to combine or tie up all the different split files that we have into a single bundle. And that bundle is only going to be possible with Webpack as well. So as you see, it gets a little bit more complicated as we move on to higher levels of your application. So really, CodePen is the best option for just playing around or experimenting with React without really building an actual application. Perhaps a better approach would be to use Code Sandbox. Now, that website is kind of new, but essentially the idea is that it provides you with a way to create sort of like files in the cloud where you already have access to all of the NPM modules as well as Babel and Webpack. So all of that is bundled up and it's already being displayed as you can see on the right here. And you can modify the files. Let's, um, here we are. Okay, so here, as you can see, there's also hot module reloading. So there's a lot of different features. And it's pretty useful because you can download the whole thing to your local file system. But at the same time, if you wanted to have full control, um, having your application on the local development environment is really the best option. And in order to do that, the very first thing that you would need to do is you would need to install Node.js. Now, Node.js is basically a runtime environment for JavaScript. Um, the reason you need to install it is because you would need access to NPM. NPM is basically Node Package Manager. It's a global repository that contains a lot of different projects related to JavaScript. So if you wanted to install Node.js, you might as well have it, but in order to verify, you could do Node-V. And by the way, I'm running Ubuntu 17.10 Artful. It's really one of the latest releases of that operating system, but you could do the same type of commands on your system, whether it's Windows or Mac OS. Anyways, I already have NPM installed. If you didn't, just head over to Node.js.org. Make sure you install Node.js before you do anything else. And one of the useful tools that I really like to use for managing Node.js versions is known as NVM. NVM is basically known as Node Version Manager, and it's really powerful package that allows you to manage different versions of Node.js local. Right, so let's say we wanted to do NVM LS. That's basically going to print out all the different versions of Node.js that are installed in the system. If you wanted to install a specific version, you could do NPM install, and then the version, let's say I wanted to install 9.3.0, I would just do that, 9.3.0, and that would basically install that version of Node.js to my local system. Of course, you could also uninstall if you want to basically uninstall, let's say, an older version of Node.js. That's quite a versatile and useful package manager right there for you. All right, so once you get Node.js installed, the other thing that we might want to consider installing is a boilerplate package or library that's known as Create React App. Now, as I already mentioned, there's quite a few things that you need in order to create a React application. So let's say you wanted to create that application locally. Of course, there's two things that you need. One of them, as I already mentioned, is React, but there's also a React DOM library. Now, besides that, it's also very likely that you're going to be working with ES6, right? And ES6 features, as you probably know, are not fully supported in all of the browsers just yet. So it's best to use a preprocessor like Babel. So that would be the third package that you would need. And of course, like I already mentioned, if you have a lot of different files split across the project, and typically that's the use case, 
you would also need a way to bundle up all those files together. And besides, you would also have you know, assets such as CSS assets or SAS or less assets, I mean, it's basically your styles or style sheets. And typically you might also have images and of course your templates, right, or HTML files. In case of React, there's typically no HTML files. Typically you have your HTML or more properly known as JSX that's already embedded into your JavaScript files. But in either case, you would need a bundler such as Webpack in order to be able to compile all of those files together. It's very common for a lot of different projects to have a single JavaScript file that basically contains all of your code as well as all of the vendor libraries, minified and uglified and all that. And last but not least, it's also useful to have hot module reloading which Webpack server provides. Now, of course, you can install all of those different libraries yourself, but again, it takes time. And usually, if you just want to build an application, you really don't want to care about all those external dependencies yourself. It's really useful if you have a boilerplate project that contains all those libraries already, that contains all the Webpack configuration for you, so that you don't have to spend time on that. And this is really what Create React App provides. Now, if you do a quick uh, Google search, let's do Create React App, right there, shows up. So if you open it up, I think they have the repository in GitHub. And if you scroll down, you're gonna see the instructions for installing it. So it's pretty simple. Once you have Node.js installed, just do npm install dash g create react app. I think I already have it installed. So in this case, I'm not gonna do it. But once you do that, you'll have your create react app command. In fact, you just do create react app. And yep, as you can see, it's already installed on my system. So if you don't have it, make sure you install it first and then go back to this tutorial. Right, so once we did that, let's actually create an application with that package. I'm gonna go to my workspace, I'm gonna go to React, and I'm going to create React app, let's call it Countdown. Okay, so it's basically going to install all the external dependencies for you. Right, I'm back here, looks like it all finished. Let's do CD countdown. Let's go to that repository, that project. Let's do atom dot. 